Hi, I imagine the reason that you're looking at this video is because you have an interest in a porous material. It could be any porous material. A gas mask filter, could be graphite from a nuclear power station, maybe a powdered sample, powdered soil and repacked. Might be a building material or reservoir sandstone. Uh, might be a filter paper or it could be dual porous calcium carbonate for paper coatings. Any porous material. But what you want to do is either study that porous material or improve it or maybe you want to know how it ages or uh, whether you can improve the, the properties of a filter for example, make it a better filter or a more exact filter. And so Pore Expert is the software to help you do that. Now you may think that you already have a lot of information about your porous material. You may have x-ray CT scans, mercury porosimetry, you may have porometry curves, electron micrographs and so on. But all of those give you partial information about the porous material and Pore Expert is the new software to bring all that together and help you solve your problems about porous material. So let's have a look at the software. So first we run an operation called initialization sampling and this is to load your experimental data file. The one I have loaded is one of many examples we give you. This is Clashak outcrop sandstone and it's probably one of the simplest ones to model. We then ask to run the next procedure which is called fitting. So here is the experimental mercury intrusion curve going from low pressure up to high pressure mercury intrusion which is going from large size to small size of a capillary diameter for the entry of the mercury. We can choose various structure types to give its proper name, this is the short range size autocorrelation function. You can, if you like, choose capillary bundle, which simply takes the first derivative of the mercury intrusion curve, and that's the traditional way of doing it in the literature. That is only entirely valid for specific samples, such as track etch membranes. Natural samples, vertically banded, is uh, quite often a useful structure to use. So we then say that we would like to accept that and get the simulation to converge onto the experimental data. And if you look at the screen, you'll see the simulated curve converge very quickly onto the experimental curve. But we just have another look at that for a moment. There it is. And what you saw is a complicated mathematical device called a Boltzmann annealed simplex which does all the work for you. Like many of the operations, if not all of the operations on the software, it is fully automated. So we then ask to do the next operation which is to build the unit cell. So we then build it. We are asking to do a unit cell of dimensions 10 by 10 by 10 pores with up to 3,000 throats connected to it. You can do much larger sizes than that. Uh, up to 30 by 30 by 30, that is up to uh, nearly 30 times bigger overall. Um, you may not be able to do that on your own computer, in which case you can ask us to do it with a facility known as the cloud. So we then accept that and have a look at it. There we have unit cell building, we click on that. Let's choose 3D full screen view. So here we have a structure where the solid phase is shown as transparent. The holes within the structure are shown as boxes connected by cylinders. Now clearly that is very simplistic. A real sample doesn't look that simple. But the important thing is that if you put this simulated structure, for example, into a mercury porosimeter, it will give you exactly the same experimental results as your own sample. So we escape from that and go back to the home screen. Now having constructed this unit cell, uh, this unit cell connects together in all directions like Lego bricks, it has periodic boundary conditions. Having constructed it, a huge range of other things are then possible. We can look at the distribution of connectivities within the network, the content within there if we put fluids into it, 
uh, pore and throat size distribution, for example. Here are the sizes of all the features there, which you can uh, plot in other ways by volume. You can combine pores and throats together, for example. And we can also, for example, simulate microtoming so that you can compare it with microscopic thin sections. Or we can do calculations, absolute permeability, thermal conductivity, tortuosity, filtration, fluid uptake, which is either mercury intrusion or water retention in soil, migration, which includes diffusion. So let me show you just one of these, which is filtration. So here we have a uh, sample. I'll just refresh that so you can see the entire sample. So there is the structure. And here is the particle size distribution, which we can see. So this is just a default distribution. Uh, I'm going to add some larger particles into it now. I'm going to add a couple of 50 micron particles in to the distribution and add them to the overall distribution. So there we see the distribution has been added. We accept that as the, that's the particle size distribution we want filtered. We accept and watch the software filter it. Okay, so now we see the filtration simulation coming to its end. And then we click on the filtration button here, refresh it. And uh, here we see the structure and the two large particles, as you can see, have been trapped right at the top of the sample. Other particles may be trapped inside it. So you can actually see where your filter has trapped the particles. Or we can uh, look at the filtration efficiency graph or particle size versus pressure drop and efficiency. So you can see that not only do we get numerical information about your porous material, but also graphical and structural information as well. So now we go back to the screen and the final thing is to show you something very important indeed, which is this option called engineering targeted modification. You have a porous material, maybe it is a filter, an outcrop sandstone, and you say, well, if that structure is modified to a certain extent, how will its properties change? If for example, I shrink the little narrow necks in the filter by 20%, how will the filtration characteristic change? So that you can do these what if tests on your porous material and save yourself a huge amount of laboratory and production time in the process. Finally, once you've finished, you can save as a poor expert file, which allows you to restart exactly from where you have left off. You can save it as a fully formatted PDF report, for example, for your line manager or in quality control applications. You can save it as a CSV file, which will output into spreadsheets such as Excel or into graphical packages such as Sigmaplot. So I hope you've seen the huge power of Poor Expert. Poor Expert is the world's best model for modelling porous materials and the behaviour of fluids, that is liquids and gases within it, and also it will model thermal conductivity for you. We hope that you'll have a try with the software yourself. If you'd like to have a go with it, then go to the website www.poorexpert.com, go to the downloads page, download yourself a free 30-day trial and have a go with it. Thank you for listening.